live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Microsoft Ignite. Brought to you by Cohesity. Welcome back everyone and welcome to theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite here in Orlando. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We are joined by Nicholas Gerasimotos. He is a cloud computing evangelist at Red Hat. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about what you do at Red Hat. So I work with a lot of uh, Red Hat partners. Um, really trying to foster the ecosystem and build Red Hat products and solutions that can actually be deployable and repeatable uh, for, for different customers. So, different verticals, financial, healthcare, doesn't really matter for the most part. I try and just focus on cloud computing and really just evangelizing a lot of our technologies that we have. Okay, so, so what are the kinds of things you're doing here at Ignite? Um, so, I've been spending a lot of time actually working with uh, some of the partners like uh, Accenture, uh, IBM, um, We've been doing a bunch of different webinars, a little bit of hands-on workshops, kind of educating people about uh, distributed computing, edge computing, um, and some of the technologies that we've been working a lot with Microsoft. So, uh, the co-engineering of SQL Server, uh, the managed service offering that we're doing with OpenShift, uh, which is our enterprise-grade Kubernetes platform, um, along uh, many other different things. Yeah, so, so, so Nicholas, uh, you know, it's been a couple of years now that we've gotten over some of the gasp. Wait, Microsoft uh, has not said that, you know, we're killing the penguins, uh, <laughs> you know, off on the side. Uh, I, you know, I was in Boston for Red Hat Summit, Tati Nadella's uh, up on stage there. Uh, you know, Red Hat, you know, is not hiding at the show. Yeah. Um, so, you know, bring us inside, you know, where, you know, customer deployments are happening, where engineering efforts uh, are working together, uh, you know, we know, we've been hearing for years, yep. you know, Red Hat's in all of the clouds and partnering all of the Americans, so what, what's, you know, different or special about the Microsoft relationship? I mean, honestly, I think the relationship is just evolving and growing because our customers are asking for it, right? They're going towards hybrid and multi-cloud type of strategies. They want to be able to take advantage of, you know, running uh, RHEL within their own data centers or running RHEL specifically on top of, you know, Microsoft Azure. Um, but then they're also looking at other cloud service providers. Uh, I think it's going to be mandated eventually at some point in time where customers are going to start looking at you know, diversification when it comes to running applications wherever it makes sense, taking advantage of different you know, uh, cloud native services, different providers. So we've been spending a lot of time like understanding what their needs are and then trying to build the engineering to actually address those needs. Um, I think a lot of that has really come from the, the co-engineering that we have going on. So we have you know, Red Hat engineers sitting alongside Microsoft engineers, you know, spending a lot of time building things uh, like the Windows abstraction layer, uh, WSL, things along those lines. All right, so I'll be at KubeCon in a couple of weeks, and yep. Kubernetes, Still, a lot of people don't really understand where it fits. It's a huge you know, buzzword. We, we, we've been saying, you know, Kubernetes is going to be baked into every platform. Red Hat, of course, is you know not only a major contributor, uh, but has a lot of customers on OpenShift. Uh, we had Microsoft, uh, you know, this week talking about Azure Arc is in preview, but you know, they're, they're, uh, Dave, David Totten, who does partnership engagement, says, you know, this does not mean that we will not continue to partner with OpenShift, and the best place to run OpenShift is on Azure. It's the most secure. It's the best. So help us understand as to you know, where this fits in the overall discussion of that multi-hybrid cloud that we were talking about earlier. I think everybody wants kind of a single pane of glass for manageability. They want the ability to actually look and see where their infrastructure is being deployed. You know, one of the, the pitfalls of moving to the cloud is the fact that it's so easy to spin up resources that a lot of times we lose track of where these resources are. Or individuals leave companies, and when they leave companies, they leave behind a lot of leftover items and instances, and that becomes really costly over a period of time. It may be not so bad if you have you know, 100 or 500 instances, but when you talk to some of these enterprise customers that are running 10,000 or 100,000 instances and spending millions of dollars a month, it, it, it could get very costly. And not only that, but it could also be a security risk as well. So let's talk about security. What kinds of conversations are you having with regard to security and, and data protection at this conference? So you know, one of the biggest things that we've had a lot of customers asking us about is uh, Red Hat Insights. So uh, Red Hat Insights is a way, it's a, a smart management application that actually ties into uh, looking at either workloads or configuration management. It can actually tell you if you have a drift. So for example, um, let's say you install SQL Server on RHEL and you misconfigure it, you leave the admin account running on it, it can actually alert you and make uh, recommendations for remediation. Or maybe in general you're using, uh, you know, SE Linux is disabled, or things along those lines. So Insights can actually 
actually look into uh, the operating system or the applications and tell you if there's misconfigurations. All right, uh, a lot of discussion about developers here. Uh, you know, day two keynote was all about uh, uh, you know, app dev and the like. Satya uh, spent a lot of time talking about the citizen developer. Yep. Uh, seems like that would be an intersection uh, between what Red Hat's doing and, and Microsoft. Yep. Um, so I, I would say, you know, we're obviously very developer first focused, right? When we built things like OpenShift, we, we kind of were thinking about developers before we were thinking about operations. And later on we actually had to build more of the operations aspects into it. Now like for example in OpenShift there's two different portals. There's one for the developer focus and one for the IT admin focus with operations groups because they want to see what's going on. Developers don't really care specifically about seeing the abstraction of where things are. They just want to deploy their code get it out the door as quickly as they can, um, and they're really just not too concerned about the, uh, the infrastructure component pieces. But all of these developers, they want to be able to write their applications, write their code, and deploy it essentially anywhere and everywhere, and, and have it the easiest process, and we're really just trying to make that as simple as possible. You know, like Visual Studio plugins that we have for uh, OpenShift, you know, Eclipse Chi and other things. Um, so really, I mean, Red Hat's always been very developer focused first. So does that, seeing Microsoft and Satya Nadella up on the stage talking about this developer first attitude, that, yep. that Microsoft is really embracing the developer and as you said, app development for all, that does seem like a bit of a cultural shift for Microsoft. Absolutely. Much more aligned with the Red Hat way and, and sort of open source. So, are you talking about that within, with, the, your, with your colleagues at Red Hat, about the change that I, you've seen, the evolution of Microsoft? Absolutely, I mean, if you look at like Microsoft, the contributions that they're putting towards like Kubernetes or even contribution towards OpenShift, it's, it's amazing, right? I mean, it's like the company's done a complete 180 from the way that they used to be. They're so much more open, uh, the acquisition of like GitHub, for example, um, all these different changes, it, it's, it's amazing. He's done amazing things with the company. I, I can't say enough positive things about all the wonderful things that he's done, so. All right, so Nicholas, Red Hat has an interesting position in the marketplace because you do partner with all of the clouds uh, and the environment. And while IBM is now the parent owner of Red Hat and they have a cloud, um, you, your customers touch all of them. I'm not going to ask you to competitively analyze them, but when you're talking to customers that are choosing Azure, is there anything that's calling out as to why they're choosing Microsoft, where you know, they have you know, a, a, a advantage in the marketplace, or what is drawing customers to them, uh, and then of course Red Hat with that? I think Microsoft is, is more advanced when it comes to artificial intelligence and machine learning, AI and ML and edge computing. I think they're, light years ahead of everyone else at this point in time. I think uh, you know, Amazon and Google are kind of playing a little bit of catch up there. Um, and, and it's showing, right? If you look at the power platform, for example, customers are embracing that. Uh, it, it's just, it's fantastic looking at uh, a lot of the changes that they've implemented. And I think it's, it's very complementary to the way that people are starting to build their applications, moving towards distributed infrastructures, uh, microservices, and then obviously cloud native services as well. In terms of the future, we are really just scratching the surface when it comes to, to the cloud. What do you see five, 10 years from now in terms of growth rates and also in terms of the ways in which companies are using the cloud? So I, I kind of like to equate it towards like the progression that we've had with cars. I know it sounds so, so simple, but you know, we went from steam engine to regular piston engines and now we've gotten to a point where we have electric cars and there's going to be self-driving cars. I think we're going to get to a point where code is going to be autonomous in a sense, right? Self-correcting, the ability to actually just write code and deploy it, not really having to worry about that entire infrastructure layer. Everybody's calling it serverless. There's always going to be a server per se, but I think we're going to have a point where in the next five to 10 years, that it, it, all of that is going to be completely abstracted away. It's just going to be focused on writing the code and machine learning is going to help us actually evolve that code and make it run faster and make it run better. And we're, we're already seeing huge benefits in, in when it comes to machine learning and the big data analytics and things along those lines. So it's just natural progression. All right. Uh, would love, you know, what's top of mind from the customers that you're talking to or at the event? Uh, any new learnings that you've had or, uh, you know, things that have kind of caught your attention? I think the biggest thing, honestly, is, is really been the, the multi-cloud, poly-cloud methodology that everybody seems to be embracing. Um, I'm, it, it seems like every customer I'm talking to is looking at, trying to avoid vendor lock-in per se, 
but still have that flexibility um, to deploy their applications wherever and still utilize cloud native services without actually you know, specifically having to you know, go completely open source in yeah, a sense. Yeah, so one of the challenges there is every cloud, I need different skills to be able to do them. Yeah. I, if, if I'm deploying it, it, it's the people and being able to do that. You know, we all lived through that era of trying to do multi-vendor. Yeah. Um, and often it was challenges. So have we learned from what we've done in the past? Can multi-cloud actually be uh, more valuable to a company than the sum of its parts? I, I think so, and I think that's the reason why like, Microsoft is investing in Arc, for example. I think those methodologies, we, we know multi-cloud's tough. It's never going to be easy. And so these companies need to start building and developing platforms for it. Um, it there needs to be, it'd be great if there were standard APIs and such, right? But they're never going to do something along those lines. But I think the investments that they're putting forth now are going to make multi-cloud and poly-cloud a lot easier in the future. And I think customers are asking for it. If customers ask for it, they're going to build it. So. And what, what does this mean for the workforce, though, and in terms of the kinds of candidates that companies are going to hire? Because as we said, it, it does require different skills and, and, and different capabilities. So how, what's your advice to the young computer scientists coming up in terms of what they should be learning? And, and then also, how do you think companies are, are making sense of all of this? So I know from a company perspective, it's challenging. A lot of companies, especially, you know, for example, I, I was talking to a very large uh, financial institution and they were saying that their biggest issue right now is hiring talented people to deal with microservices and Kubernetes. Anytime they hire someone, they end up getting poached by the big cloud companies. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where people are going to have to start you know, diversifying their talents and look at the future. So, I mean, obviously microservices are here. They're going to continue to be here. I would say people should invest in that. Um, but also look at serverless. You know, I definitely think serverless is, is towards the future. And then when it comes to like learning skills of multi-cloud, I think cloud computing, that's just the number one growing thing yeah. in general. So since you didn't bring up serverless, uh, you know, today, I hear serverless and most customers that I talk to, that means AWS. Uh, number two in the space probably is Microsoft, but there's efforts in to try to help, there you is. know, give a little bit of open source and standardization there. Uh, where, where's Red Hat stand on, on this? What do you see from Microsoft? What are you hearing from customers? I, I mean, we're, we're heavily contributed to all the different, you know, projects trying to make serverless, like, easier to use and not so much um, specific to vendors, right? So whether that's you know, Apache Spark or whatever you want to consider it to be, um, we're trying to invest, invest in those different types of technologies. Um, I think the main issue with serverless right now is we still don't really know how to utilize it effectively and it's still kind of this uh, gray area in a sense, right? It, it's cutting edge, bleeding edge, emerging technologies and it, it's just, in my opinion, it's not perfectly ready for prime time but I think that's specifically because there's just not enough people that are actually invested in it at this point in time, so. So what are you going to take back with you when you head back to Phoenix uh, from, from this conference? What are the things that have sparked your interest the most? Gosh, I would, I would probably have to say really digging in deep on, on the, the ARC announcement. I think that's the, the thing that I'm most interested in understanding and how, how we can actually contribute to that and maybe make that pluggable for things like OpenShift, you know, whether it's OpenShift on-premise, OpenShift running in the cloud, um, and other RHEL architectures, you know, things like Insights being able to plug into that. I really see us trying to work with Microsoft to start building those things. Great. Well, Nicholas, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. It was a really fabulous conversation. Yeah, thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage from Microsoft Ignite.